All newborns are tested for PKU. Most parents know it as the heel stick, a blood test to see if a baby has the enzyme needed to process phenylalanine. A baby born with PKU is unable to break down in its body a common amino acid called phenylalanine. If that phenylalanine builds up too much in the baby's body, it results in very serious developmental disabilities. Robert Resta is a genetic counselor whose new theoretical study analyzes how many babies born with PKU since 1967 might now be adult women with maternal PKU. The frequency of PKU is about a 1 in uh, 15,000 births in the United States. Uh, so that probably adds up to about 500 babies born with PKU every year in this country. Babies with PKU need a special diet to avoid brain damage. But without a registry tracking these children into adulthood, there's no way to know how many pregnant women with PKU might be off diet. During pregnancy, a woman off diet with PKU can potentially affect the brain development of her fetus. It's a kind of a warning shot to the medical community that we need, to, we should take care of, or track these people, which is a valid point. And what I found is that essentially it's possible that for every baby born with PKU and who is treated and disabilities are avoided, another baby is going to be born who has a totally different set of disabilities from the mother's own PKU. It's important that mothers that are affected, that lack this enzymes, um, stay on a diet during pregnancy and even before pregnancy. Researchers don't consider this new information a public health crisis, but warn that pregnant women with PKU need to know that going off diet is not safe for their babies. The upshot of my study is that if we don't keep careful track of women with MPKU, we're going to create a whole set of babies being born with disabilities that could have been entirely prevented. This is Melanie Granforce in Seattle.